Former President of Iceland, Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson, and the Mayor of Reykjavík, dear guests, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you today on the occasion of launching of ORCA, the world's largest direct air capture and storage plant. This collaboration between Carpfix and Climeworks, which Olaver described uh, here in his speech, actually marks a milestone in our fight against climate change. And this is indeed an important step in the race to net zero greenhouse gas emissions which is essential to manage the climate crisis. And this is the goal that the world needs to be focusing on. Even though decarbonization is the most important step towards net zero, it isn't enough in itself. We still need to deploy direct air capture technologies on large scale to reach those goals. And for the first time, the direct, the direct air capture technology is combined with the CARPFIX CO2 storage technology for a project of this scale, allowing us to permanently capture CO2 already emitted to the atmosphere and safely and rapidly turn into stone underground. New green technologies, such as those of CARPFIX and Climeworks, and effective innovation policies will help drive low carbon innovation support the creation of the new low carbon business models and thus enables us to phase out the polluting ones. Science and innovative technology is one of the keys to fighting climate change and it underpins the global consensus on the need for action. Dear guests, the world has now been in the grips of COVID-19 for almost two years now with devastating effects to health, economies, and lives of people around the globe. And the pandemic has truly reminded us of the power of nature. And it has also provided us with important lessons, as most crises do. And many young people, because the former president mentioned that I'm actually on an election campaign, so I'm meeting a lot of people around the country. And many young people have asked me, why do world leaders not respond as vigorously to the threat of the climate crisis as they have done in the case of COVID-19? Because after all, both crises are global, economically devastating, and require global solutions. And what is more, human behavior and scientific knowledge is central in both crises. We must use this lesson and the experience we have gained through the pandemic in working closely with scientists in researching, analyzing, and finding solutions to the climate crisis. And we should be taking a hard, long look at our response to COVID-19 and try to avoid repeating the mistakes made in our response to the climate crisis. Crises that are likely to leave us with even greater destruction, disproportionately impa impacting the poor, and increasing existing inequalities. Some of the global lessons learned are plain and simple to see. Short term is, despite clear warnings, the looming danger was not acknowledging until it was too late. Nationalism, ignoring the importance of collaboration and the need to act globally to tackle the problem, leading to increased inequalities, and the importance of science and technology, exemplary collaboration pointing us in the direction of recovery and focus on solving the problem at hand. There is no time to waste. A report after report from the scientific community has told us so for years. IP, ICC, uh, ICCP's last report was especially grim and tells us loud and clearly that we need to increase our climate ambitions further and both enhance emission cuts and carbon removal actions to reach carbon neutral, neutrality by 2040. Last year was supposed to be a decisive year for climate action. But the pandemic shifted the focus and put the world's action to that effect more or less on hold. However, climate change did not pause. Its effects have been on full display around the world. COP26 is around the corner, and we need all nations to roll up their sleeves and get to work. There is an opportunity there not to be wasted. World leaders must step up and take seriously the clear warnings about the devastating effects of the ongoing climate crisis 
and take concrete actions in order to build a greener future for all. We need ambitious policies and actions, not just policies. We need courageous governments to see them through, and we need scientists and the private sector to lead the way with us. Think globally, act locally, still apply, applies as ever. Yes, what we do at home counts, and yet most people want more global cooperation, not less. In August last year, the United Nations conducted a survey asking people around the globe about their priorities and possible solutions to the planet's most intractable challenges. And one of people's single biggest concerns was climate change and how to build a global consensus and cooperation to tackle it. Because people around the world understand that this is a global challenge and that we need to tackle it together. We need multiple solutions to assist us in that enormous endeavor. And I do hope, and actually I am convinced, that the ORCA project will mark an important technological breakthrough towards that end, and that it will help to encourage even bigger technological advancements in the future. And most of all, I am convinced that it will inspire the world to really believe in the incredible possibilities that science and technology offer us to help to find solutions to the enormous challenges presented by the climate crisis. Because this almost sounds like a science fiction story, but we do have other examples in our history of amazing advances in technology. 52 years ago, the world's attention was on the Apollo, uh, Apollo 11 mission which not only spurred amazing advances in many areas of space exploration technology, telecommunications and computers, but it also spurred the belief in the human spirit, which is maybe the most important one when we are faced with a crisis of this size. Our capacity to find solutions to what may seem an impossible feat, but is possible if we work together. Thank you.